so starting with the most basic hemostatic clotting trainers of these ones here. So these are our basic squares. And we make them as uh, either a laceration or as a gunshot wound. The gunshot wound has a, a big cavity underneath. So the idea of that is that it's, it's simulating the cavitation that happens behind a gunshot wound, which is where all that hemorrhage is going to be happening and that you want to be able to get in there and not just sort of treat it on the surface. So the idea of this is that they can actually get into the source of the bleed and pack that internally. And the laceration is, is, a, is a big open wide laceration. These are all made with a, a silicon tube that goes directly into the base of it so that there's a source of bleeding for them. So if we're setting up to use it, what we would normally do is, is have something underneath to collect the, the mess because it, it is a little bit of a messy situation that we're going to create. We've just used lids off, uh, you know, your plastic packing containers, but you can put down, you know, cheap plastic drop sheets or like the incontinence um, blue sheets, that sort of thing, towels, anything like that. Or you can do it inside a plastic bucket. I see plenty of people that use, you know, the, the square plastic um, containers and just put the whole lot inside there. So we've got that. We've got our syringes that come with it. We've got some gauze. And what we have here is just a, uh, a compressed gauze for training. So as you probably know, the actual hemostatic agent itself is very expensive. So for training, that's really, you know, not something that people want to do, um, whereas the, the cheap gauze is, a, is an alternative. Um, so you might want to show them what the real stuff looks like and then say, but you know, for today we're going to use, we're going to use the, the training aid. Um, some scissors to cut that off, just so you're not wasting too much. Uh, gloves if you need it. And then we want some blood, the key component to what we're doing. So we use a, a, a stage blood, uh, it's a Ben Nye product, comes out of the USA. It's made to professional standards for like Hollywood actor sort of stuff. It's not particularly expensive for what it is. Um, the reason we use this one is that it's, it's very safe and it washes out of everything. So if you get it on your tablecloths, on your clothes or everywhere else, I've had it on carpets and cleaned it out and it's, it's not too much of a drama in that way. It's safe to go on your skin and it's safe to go in your mouth. Now, not that you're going to be doing that with these types of training, but we also use this in our moulage where we might do uh, facial injuries and so forth. So it's very safe to use. Because we're going to run it through some tubing, we need to dilute it a little bit. So we would normally dilute this down one part blood to four or five parts water. So um, what I'm going to do here is just pour some into our jug. And that's a bit of a rough measurement, but you get the general idea. The other thing about using uh, a professional grade product as your blood rather than cooking something up on the stove is that you have a safety data sheet for it. So if you're doing it for um, clients and industry, you will often have to provide uh, safety data sheets for everything that you do. Anywhere where you know, anything's coming into, into contact with, with people, you have to be able to prove that it's, um, it's safe and being tested and so forth. Um, so that this is just a 60 mil syringe, just a nice easy way to, um, to get it into your thing. We've put this one on an angle just so it's easy for you to see, but we'd normally just sit it flat on the, on the table. And then um, it'll, it has like one arterial spot at the top here where it's going to flow out and we would normally you know get it started and get it flowing so that the student can see where all the blood's coming from you teach them the lesson so the other thing i need to make clear is today i'm not teaching you how to teach hemorrhage control but uh, we know all about the training aids <laughs> so um, once it's flowing you can sort of do your lesson of how you would treat that what you would do how you would find that source of the bleeding but basically they can look in there they can feel in there all of that and they can see where that point is and then they can start packing that so um, you can it's a bit awkward at this angle but you can I'll just speed this up so you're not watching grass grow. The nice thing about the silicon is that it's very stretchy. You can squeeze quite a lot in there. You can keep going and it'll, it'll sort of take that up. So you can keep doing your whole lesson like that, get the pressure on and, and do all of that. Um, and
And if you, you want to release it, take the pressure off and show them that if they don't keep the pressure on it ste keeps bleeding, you can keep it bleeding through there. But you can get all those messages across that, you know, the goal is to get it packed, fill the cavity, keep the pressure on um, and, and what happens when you don't. So that's the, the most basic one that we do is that one. The gunshot wound is the same process except you're going into a cavitation instead of just a small block. And then stepping right along to these ones here, um, again a laceration and a, um, a gunshot wound. These are just a little bit more human shape to them compared to the flat ones. Some people prefer it that way, some people don't care, it's really personal choice. These ones we just provide them with a little squeeze bottle instead of the syringe. That's really the, uh, the only difference there. And then you can um, do exactly the same thing with them. So you can make him bleed. You can get in there, stretch the wound open, have a good look, take anything out that you need to take out, any of that sort of stuff. And then jam your fingers in there. They're really robust. So um, these have been made with a reinforced layer underneath, so they'll take a lot of stretch. So when we look at the gunshot wound, for example, um, it looks like a small hole and then a big bit underneath, but that will actually stretch wide open. So if you've got, you know, big male thumbs going there and so forth, you can, it's not going to tear. They're sort of designed to be able to deal with that. So that's those two. Moving along. The thigh, um, this was the first haemostatic clotting trainer that we made and this was for the army because they were at that stage using hindquarters of pork and all sorts of stuff and they, they wanted something big and they wanted to be simulating a junctional wound. So by junctional wound we're talking about where a limb meets the body, so either an armpit wound or a groin wound, um, those big life-threatening nasty things. So that's what he was just sort of designed as a thigh. So he's got his femoral artery um, severed here and he bleeds exactly the same as these guys do. So I won't keep running them all but yeah he's, <laughs> he's pretty much the same. The other thing I haven't shown you here is how to clean this all up when you, you're finished. A lot of people that are now having to look at um, hemorrhage control training aids for the first time in their training are, are a little bit nervous about how they're going to make all that work in, indoors. But it's it's not that it's not that difficult. I've got just a bucket of water here, but um, you can run them under the tap. You can do anything. They're very robust. Um, I tend to, if I'm going to be training for a few days in a row, save this blood so you're not wasting it. Um, the food colouring's not too bad either. I haven't had, um, I've had no trouble getting it off clothing and I've been soaked <laughs> at times. Um, I haven't got it into any fine fabrics like s silks and so forth, but um, I've washed it out of carpet and I've washed it out of clothes and it's, it's not been too bad. Um, I do try to minimise <laughs> how much mess we make. But, um, but it, is, it is pretty good. So um, with this, you can either just run it under the tap, you can stick it in a bucket of water. Um, if you leave the, um, the blood in the tubing, it does, it does harden, but um, it will generally still come out. Like I've, sometimes if I've had to leave the, um, the training room in a hurry because it's the end of the day and they're about to lock up, um, I've just thrown it all into the bag and brought it out and cleaned it, you know, a couple of days later and it, and it still does wash out. Um, if you need to, if it starts to get thick, um, a bit of warm water will, will get it out. But just running a little bit of water through it um, is really all you need to do. Um, I tend to keep the syringes because they're not being used for anything clinical. Um, there's no reason that you can't just wash them out and use them again and again. And that's really all you've got to do with it. It's very, very easy. <laughs> <laughs>